Hello and welcome to this Sleepy Limpets video. It's uh, the beginning of March and we're going to go and try and catch some fish from the rocks using uh, lures. You can fish all the way through the winter around these parts but generally in March the I don't know what happens the fishing turns off for pollock and cod. We're going to give it a try anyway so the plan today is maybe target coolies first of all because they're here all year round and then I'll save the blank and then start uh, dragging soft plastics and things around try and fishing as slowly as possible just to to get any sort of chance of uh, of catching a pollock or cod the conditions today it's i'm excited because this is the first time in about three months i think that we haven't had much wind which is just yeah it's phenomenal i think we're looking at seven mile an hour later on so oh, that's uh it's unheard of i mean we've been gusting 30 and 40 most days so yeah that is brilliant and that's one of the reasons why i came out just for the sake of getting out the fish there was a big swell yesterday as well uh that should hopefully according to the forecast anyway start dying down and uh with that and the light winds then happy days it's just going to be a nice day out on the rocks there is a little bit of color in the water but i don't think it's too bad I chose this spot because um, there's a lot of tidal flow and hopefully it might just bring some cold water, eh, cold water, the water's always cold, might bring some clear water through so uh, I'm going to get packed up and let's go. It's sunny. Oh, this is exactly the type of day I was after. I got really excited when I got down here and I've just emptied all my kit. I haven't wet a line yet, so I don't know what the fishing's going to be like, but oh, after all the beach fishing and, uh, and fishing in heavy winds and rain, it's just nice to sit and have some, uh, some vitamin D. But uh, yeah, we're down at the mark. Um, I've got my heavy rod with us uh, which is the rod I uh, bought for Orkney basically or or heavier conditions um, the swell as I mentioned earlier is a little bigger than I usually like but it's due to drop off according to the forecast so uh, shouldn't be too much of an issue just going to stay away from the edge with the swell it's going to be quite tough to drag a, a plastic across the bottom of soft plastic for the cotton pollock so gonna fish with the metal first of all and then hopefully that should, uh, should get the plank off me back if not I can just cover some water and relearn the ground because it's been ages since I've been to this mark heavy rod is a tailwalk SSD uh, sorry tailwalk high tide SSD rated at 15 to 50 grams so it, it is chunky uh, a lot heavier than I'm used to fishing uh, on that I've got my usual die BG mag sealed two and a half thousand size uh, and that's loaded with 0.6 PE Tazlan Elite grade rated at 12 pounds break and strain which is great for heavy currents and winds and things and cuts through barnacles like a knife through butter the sun doesn't normally hang around this, these parts very often it gets behind the cliffs so I'm going to really enjoy this until it gets absolutely freezing because it was uh, it was minus two when I left the house this morning but uh aye enough chatting let's get a line wet and see what we can get oh, how sunny is this um i'm gonna start off at this little point here casting out here um because i want to make the most of the sunshine basically um can, i have had more pollock or bigger pollock around the corner but um yeah it's just it seems like months and months and months I've had a decent amount of sun, sun on my face so, uh, starting off with a 40 grams then which is quite heavy 
um, but it needs to be with this rod and also with the big swell it gives me a bit more control and feel in the water so uh, let's get it out and see if we're gonna get a fish It's on the bottom there. I'm just going to lift it up and take it off the seabed for a few feet and then just slow retrieve it through. With a couple of, oh, with a couple of pauses. I either got a hit there or uh, hit some structure. Second cast! Oh yes! Thank you, Mr. Cooley. Ah, oh, it's come off! Oh, devastated! Second cast! Hit quite close in there, but. It's the thing we've been using some singles. The, uh, can wriggle themselves free if you, if you don't keep the tension on them. And it was probably my fault that it came off, but uh, yes, we've got some fish action. Really thought it was going to be a hard day, but uh, sun shining and the fish just bit me lower, so. There must be a school of them, just or a shoal of them, just sitting off this structure in front of me. Little chunky guys as well. There we go. Great looking little fish. I'm a little bit overgunned with this uh, 50 gram rod, but these things don't half put out a little scrap, but like a little winter uh, mackerel. Like I say, great looking, but it does smell great. Now, do I get the F SPs out like I said I was going to, or do I wait for the swell to drop down? Yeah, I think I'm going to have a few more castles then. I found some shallow ground, but I'm there. Uh, there's a really strong current line and some boils in the water, so kind of aiming for that. And I think the boils will obviously be big bits of structure under the in the seabed, big boulders and things. And I can feel my lure bouncing and jerking around on them. But then it gets deeper over this side. And because the current's coming from right to left on the camera, I'm casting into it and my lure's coming round like that, so I'm covering the shallow ground and also eventually the deep ground. And both those coldies were consecutive casts, actually the first one that I lost and then this one, and they were right close in, just hovering above where the drop off to the deeper water is. 
which is where these metals and uh, especially slow jigs come into play because uh, instead of sinking like a stone straight past the fish, uh, you know, they're imparting some action and you know can entice the fish wherever it is in the water column. Soft plastics need to be, they need to sink at the right rate. That's part of the trick with using them is if the fish aren't on the bottom, and sometimes even if they are, they're only looking above. You can see the shape of a pollock, the bottom lip comes out, and they're used to feeding from underneath, they'll attack the bait. So if you lower sinking too quickly, then you're unlikely to, to catch them. Sometimes just changing it up by a few grams can make quite a bit of difference. Doesn't feel like a coolie. Uh, feels like a cod, I'm gonna say, because it's not fighting. Took it on the drop as well. I'm uh, gonna get it up over the structure in front of us. Should have kept fighting it instead of moving. Oh. Oh. It was quite a nice fish. Hung us up in that structure that I was trying to avoid. Uh, so give a little bit of slack to let it out when it came out it must have had some weed what happens is when this, this hooks in the fish's mouth the weed just goes down like that and pulls the hook out when you pull the tension on so yeah got off it's been about 10 casts since i've caught a fish so uh, it was nice to have that bit of fish reaction there no 10 casts since i lost a fish sorry i'm gonna keep saying it i thought it was gonna be a hard day um, the water clarity is good, um, the weather's good, so anything else is just a bonus. Pain in the sun of these things, but I'm just coming out for a bit of fishing, then uh, they're quite welcome. Why, oh, you weren't coming off. It's been uh, sitting in the sun for a few minutes. It's been really nice while I've been doing that. I've uh, got a couple of soft plastics ready. Three and a half inch slider shad in quite a bright colour. Um, I find this colour works really well in the uh, in in the sunshine basically and that's on a 10 uh, van fook hook with a 30 gram cheb which has been battered by uh, fishing in orkney i've also put on uh, 
Z-Man Punch Crow. This is on a 4 hook. I think it's a VMC hook. Um, it's the strongest one I've got, basically. It's the only one I've got left. Um, that is on a 40 gram Cheb because the way I fish these is planted to the bottom. Uh, and the reason why is these lures actually float. And so when the Cheb's sitting on the seabed like that, this is sitting up with his uh, little uh, pincers up in the air up or up in the water it really mimics like a squat lobster or I don't know, a little shrimp or prawn and uh, the fish come and when they hit these it's really savage because there's no just hitting on the drop which sometimes they do but they just grab them and then off they go well it's gone totally quiet here so I'm going to uh, the state of that chef. It is battered from the rock down there. Uh, so we're going to go around the corner. Uh, unfortunately the wind's going to be blowing in my face so uh, it's a bit chilly. Uh, I'm in a bit of a lee here so it's really nice. Cold and slippery around here. Not the best place to set a camera. Just take it home with you. Oh, I might have just lost my only 40 grams then. I started casting around with this end, I just caught all my fish on it so far so I just thought I'd put it on but uh, yeah it's a lot snuggier around here, there's a lot of steps that go down like that rather than the flat plateau of around the corner and uh, that's the result. Oh, I just went around the corner to get me uh, another lure clip, oh, it's so much nicer around there. Uh, right there we go, leader, 19 pound uh, ace, oh, sorry ace. Seagar Ace Hard uh, with a 40 gram chip and uh, a 4 row VMC hook, Predator hook, I think, and a punch pro. Oh, and a lure clip. Always need a lure clip whenever you use them, chips. Oh, I can smell coolies on the air. Maybe I should put a metal back on. that roll into a uh, crack. I went rooting around in my bag and <laughs> amazingly I found another uh, scent. I've had five casts here I believe and uh, three snags so so the ratio is not too good at the minute. I think with the swells it's making it really difficult to feel everything but I'm just going to keep persevering because this is the name of the game of uh, fishing in winter. Uh, oh by the way it's, uh, it's low tide at the minute, it's slack water and the current has just uh, it's just completely died.
Yes, we got a fish on. It's humid, it's a little coolly. The water's about five meters away from us, so. Oh no, a little pollock. Second species of the day. Bright, <laughs> transparent little uh, pollock there. So I did say at the start of the day, my plan was to uh, catch a coli and then concentrate on pollock, but that isn't the size we're after, although it is definitely the right species. Had a good couple of hits on this metal, so just gonna have to keep trucking the metal. It seems to be doing the, uh, the business at the minute. Trying to get this fish in quickly so I can get that otter on video and so he doesn't make me fish. Oh, well, there's another pollock. I've definitely found pollock hole here. That's probably why that otter is here as well. Bit more lively than the last one, probably a little bit bigger. Not very kelpy coloured, but uh, no, welcome. Really rare to see an otter. Must have fished this place, for, I don't know, 200 times? And seen an otter twice, so uh, that's my third time. Get in. Coley's Pollock and an otter, and some sunshine. Happy. Oh, I've got my drag tight. That's definitely a pollock. Even took a little bit of drag there. Oh, please see it, Mr. Rotter. Is nowhere near here. Come on, get up. Let's see if this net is long enough. Half expecting that single just to flip out. Nah, the net's not long enough. Oh, 
Oh, what am I going to do? Can't lift this. Oh, yes. Oh, that was a mission. There we go. Hey. That's made the... Uh, the day worth it, not that I was uh, I was having a bad time or anything, but um, so, uh, this is why you come pollock fishing in the winter, they're so fat and well well fed. Didn't think I was going to get it in because uh, the net wasn't long enough, had to scramble down the cliff there, but yeah, great fish, really happy with that. Let's get it back. <clears throat> This definitely probably weighs about four pounds, four and a half, because it is a fatty. I don't have a fight pollock. I love catching them. One of the best sea predators we've got, I think. And bass are great. You know, they just keep keep pulling, but I think because uh, pollock, they just want to head down. And there's so much power on the first and second lunges. Awesome species to catch. I thought it was going to be a really hard day in terms of fish. I uh, just thought it's March, you know, they've all gone, but uh, obviously not. So my leader's a bit chafed up after, uh, you probably wouldn't be able to pick that up, since it was rubbing around on the barnacles while I was scrambling down the cliffs, so I'm going to... Where's the end of the damage? Chop that much off and retie. One of the benefits of using a longer leader. <laughs> oh, Lord. Very next cast. You could feel them uh, pecking away. Oh, I don't know who can you Could feel them pecking away. So I just sped up the retrieve and uh, yeah, got the coolie. That was the very next cast. Taking miles out. I was asleep for a while, I th was thought that it uh, had almost come off. Then it woke up. Well, that'll be why it woke up, because it's a pollock and not a coolie. There we go, sprightly little fella. Got sharp teeth on the mind. This, uh, this fish action's all just coincided with the, the start of the push of the uh, tide as well, the flood. Three and three, maybe? No, that was three. Whoa. All right, so I'm fed, watered, warmed up again after going around the corner. It's like a line of freezing and lovely and warm. But uh, I've got two more zens left. 
Uh, they're both 28 grams, which isn't necessarily an issue to be honest. But uh, now I'm going to um, fish this one here. Now if I lose it, I'm going to go around the corner again because the water's starting to rise now, and I want to be able to use the Zen round there. See if there's any cod lurking around, maybe. It'd be nice to get the treble. I'm not going to be too greedy. Just enjoy it. They're just living over the top of the boulder that keeps snagging me up. Not a very elegant boat flick, but uh, first cast with a 28. I can't really feel as much with this, with the swells, I can't feel when it's hitting the ground or anything, but uh, yeah, happy days. Another look, nice little coolie. Must be a large piece of structure, well there is a large piece of structure, kind of halfway in this bay that we're fishing. And uh, I'm casting over and my lures on the far side and the snags that have been hitting, have been on, I've been that boulder, but as soon as I lift them up and over the boulder, then uh, yeah, <laughs> the coolies are just hammering it. So, yeah, sweet, more fish. This one took on the other side, on the far side of that boulder now. I think that's where all the pollock have been coming from. There must be a boundary of pollock and then coolies. Feels a little bit more pollocky, maybe. It's too small to know for sure. So yeah, that piece of structure I was talking about seems to be a, a physical borderline. Coolies on one side and pollock on the other. Pierce that snow. There we go. Smallest of the day? Don't know. Love catching them anyway. Well, that one and a jinx it, but that's two and two. Stunk in here, that for a little fish. Absolutely slammed it. Thought I was clipping structure, but um. No. These little bad boys. Alright, let's make this the last cast here. Kind of running out of time, so I'll spend a bit more time around the corner. It's a shame the sun's gone like, but.
got head shakes. Hasn't had any lunges yet. Coddling maybe? So it just needs to wake up. Yeah, I'll be putting my money on the coddling for this one. This is just a lazy pollock. Yeah. Pollock. Thank you, Wave. There we go. About three and a half, three pounds. Not near as big as the last one, but uh, it's two for a lot sharper. Well, I said that was going to be the last cast here, but um, I just have to have another. Don't know what it was about that fish, but uh, it definitely had much sharper teeth than the others. Fishy. Well, let's go around the corner, back to where we started. We've, uh, we've had a good few fish here. The tide's really pushing and uh, we're keen to try and uh, get a cod. There's a load of current moving and the tide's moving in, so... This is great, this little area, because it's a, a really big back eddy, whichever way the tide's running. Um, but I want to go and fish in the middle of the tidal stream now and see, uh, see what we can pull out of there. Oh, sunlight and warmth. Well, I think I'm going to have one last cast and then call it a day. Let's uh, make this a good one, make it count. Come on, Cotlin. <laughs> it's been um, a really cold start I mean I'm amazed at how warm it's been down here out of the wind that is now that it's been that strong but I, I really thought I was in for a tough day of fishing turns out I was wrong <laughs> at every stage <laughs> a little disappointed I lost that fish at the beginning of the day um, that could have been the codlin that I that I would have liked and then I would have got the uh, the grand slam of lure fish in the winter here, but um, yeah, really enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Uh, thank you very much for everybody who's watched and subscribed recently. And uh, leave a comment below, please. That would be great. Until the next one, tight lines. Well, here we go. First fish round the corner. Unfortunately, I'm afraid I didn't have the camera running. What a numpty. Oop. 